Well, hello everyone and welcome to the Bowling University studio from the International Bowling Campus here in Arlington, Texas. Now, this is the Profit Break. If you're joining us for the first time, we're glad you're here. Give us 15 minutes and you're gonna be well on your way to improving not only yourself, but your profitability. Now, in an environment when in most of our industry, we're experiencing record revenues, but really doing it with less staff, and in some cases, if we're honest, really less than desirable team members. So providing the great guest experience seems like a far off dream, or rather, the nightmare that keeps many of us up at night. But there is hope, and today's guest is gonna help us get through that. Mr. Frank Price is gonna share with us how to get there and stop the nightmares. Now, Frank is a great friend of our industry and founder of Bowling University and now the creator of the Gress, uh, excuse me, the Experience Academy, which takes a deeper dive to learn, discover, and development the guest experience for the amusement industry. Frank, great to see you again, and thank you for uh, joining us today. Glad to be here, Mark. Always good to see you. Awesome. Well, hey, uh, we're excited about having you with us at Bowl Expo. That'll be here before you know it. But let's jump right in, kind of the elephant in the room. Help us start out with just your definition of what is the guest experience and how do we define that today? Sure. Well, if I were to take 10 people in your audience right now and, and poll on that question, I'd probably get 10 different answers. And that uh, seems to be the, the issue at hand and always has been. Uh, everybody has a version, but most of the times their version is a little bit skewed off or a little bit more from their past perspective. And um, even though it's not anything new, it's definitely something that uh, is different than what most people think. Guest experience is really uh, elevating it above and beyond the task or the expectation of what the guest is uh, as they come through uh, for whatever your uh, venue is and it's personalizing it. So it's trying to build a relationship with each guest. The more individualized, the better. So personalization is the big key. And the second thing is to engage. Now, you mentioned earlier about the staffing problem and um, the issues that folks are having, but you can't use that anymore as an excuse as uh, some, some big companies are finding out and are imploding or taking a big hit on their brand image because of the fact that uh, well, we can't get people, we can't get good people, we can't get people back, whatever that uh, reason is. So if you want to define guest experience, it's personalization and engaging. That takes humans to do that. Yeah, good, good point. And, and we need people, and we can't fall back those, on those ex, uh, excuses anymore in, in doing that. So tell us a little bit about now your feelings on what's the difference between kind of um, – guest service and guest experience. You know, in the day when uh, I was in operations, we called it customer service or guest service. Now we talk about guest experience. How do we differentiate between those two? Yeah, uh, the customer service is probably the lowest end, of, at least in my opinion, even though some people will bank on that. Whereas you're accomplishing all the tasks that you promised to do. So if you're a bowling center and you say that we have bowling lanes and we're gonna provide you with a ball and the opportunity for shoes and, and some uh, quality food and uh, the place is gonna be clean, maintained and well kept. And oh, by the way, you've got at least people that can engage in a transaction at the, at the uh, take my monies, you know, look me in the eye, you know, welcome me and say thank you. That's the lowest level of, of, of really what uh, uh, a customer service is uh, because it's expected. So if I'm going to pay whatever you're, you're asking for your uh, venue, uh, well, I'm expecting that all those things are going to be there. So back to 15, 20, maybe even longer years ago, that was enough to differentiate. If you take another step up that ladder and you go to a guest service, now you're making it a little bit more personal, a little bit more interactive. Um, the place is clean, well kept, bathrooms especially, uh, food is you know hot, tasty, on time, and everything works. And when I do come in, um, as I would expect things to happen, they happen. And so that's kind of what I would call an average to below average um, quality of overall guest experience, although some of you will say that's the best I've been, that's the best I'm going to get, or some are saying I can't even get to there. So that really is kind of the difference. Yeah, it seems like that that this customer service and guest service is kind of the the the, the you know the the ante to get in the game. That's the minimum level we have to, to even get started. And now you're telling us we just we, we we have to elevate it. So why are you finding with the clients you work with and the properties you work with? Why is that guest experience? more important now than ever before in this kind of post-pandemic environment we're living in? 
Well, it's a combination of, you know, the pandemic, you have to, in my opinion, have to say it's over. And um, and all we're just doing is in the midst of the transition that we always talk, we talked about back when we were going through it, but now we're in it. The um, back, you know, a couple of years ago, uh, and even a year and a half ago to a year ago, we had this uh, um, boomerang effect. <laughs> Excuse me. And when the folks uh, came back because they've been, uh, cooped up for so long, their expectation wasn't very high. They just wanted to get out and do something. And at the same time, uh, businesses were trying to pull in as much business as they can to uh, fill the gaps of what they lost. But at the same time, also had issues with you know hiring team, getting team back, people wanting to work. So all these things uh, came into play. And now we hit a, an inflation period and maybe soon a recessionary period. And so the idea here is that um, now more than ever to differentiate is to work on the operation and the people development and the training and the, the ongoingness of getting better uh, because you'll differentiate yourself very easy because most are in the other category are just you know, trying to get by. Or as you would know, when you go out to dinner or you go to a, uh, your, your favorite place that you always had a, you know, good quality service or maybe even a really good experience there, it's wavering now or it's or it's hit or miss. And you're starting to wonder, you know, is it worth the increased pricing that, you know, folks in the restaurant industry, service industry, or even in our industry has to do? Is it worth it? Uh, last year and a half? Okay, well, we wanted to, to get out and eat. We wanted to go bowl. We wanted to do the things that we used to do. But now things are getting tighter. The recession coming on, we're starting to think about where we're going to spend the money that we have. And we want it to be worth it. And this is especially true, believe it or not, with the millennial generation, which is the new and upcoming um, uh, service, or, uh, our industry consumer. And uh, they are used to having some sort of an experience. They, they don't mind paying for it. But at the same time, they're the ones who are talking a lot more uh, uh, on, the, on the Internet, interactively amongst each other as to whether it's worth it or not. So it's kind of interesting to hear young people talk about their experience and what they're expecting. This is very different than us baby boomers or even Generation X. Yeah, so, some some fascinating tips for the for the viewers today. There, it seems like if you can define that guest experience and deliver upon it, you you know you are going to set yourself apart in the marketplace. Well, you know, it, it's funny, Bart, but back in 208, I remember telling all kinds of businesses, I said, so, you know, how are you doing? Well, we're in a recession, you know, and um, well, what are you doing uh, to change or to what are you reinvesting? What are you doing to make yourself better? Frank, didn't you hear me? We're in a recession. We, we have no money. You know, we're just kind of hope we get through it. But then the companies I asked, what are you doing to change? What are you doing to reinvest? The ones that said, yeah, we're doing this. So we're adding this or we're starting to work on these other things. Uh, are the ones that when the recession came out, which it eventually does, were kind of springboarded into the marketplace as being unique and being the place to go. And the others that were still kind of stuck trying to find their way back were the lower end. They had the discount. That's when Groupon came out and all the big uh, uh, discounts that were uh, to draw people back in. Uh, whereas the others were more profitable because of the fact that they're doing it uniquely different. And uh, they're also uh, being measured on a, on a different scale. So that's that maybe that top 20 percent, top 10 percent of all businesses, not just uh, in our industry. Yeah. Well, hope is a terrible business strategy. It was in 2008. It, it is in 2023 uh, going forward. So let's talk a little bit about what role do you think w the hiring process plays in all this? If we're, we're going to you know, lay out this guest experience, where, where does the hiring process fit in? Well, it's, it's huge because they're, like I said earlier, in order to personalize the experience and or to engage, it takes the humans. Everybody's got bowling, you know, some type of bowling in, in this particular market with your listeners here. And so it doesn't matter whether you're either, um, uh, one type of bowling, another type of bowling, you have a game room, don't have a game room, have laser tag, have other hybrid type uh, uh, attractions or not. That's kind of easy to put together and to have, but you also become very same, the same. What sets you apart are the people. So the biggest uh, difference here right now and what's happening or what I feel is that the wake up call is, uh, is a shake up that you cannot recruit and hire and train the way you did six months ago, a year ago. And that's what folks are struggling with the most. 
is that we're trying to go back to these methods of, of hiring, and yet these the, the actual people who want to be hired are not looking at it that way anymore. They've got other options. They're changing careers. They're, they're looking for um, meaning inside the companies that they're going to work for. Is it, Are you worth my time is what is happening, as opposed to you as an owner or manager saying, I'm willing to pay you a paycheck. I'm willing to pay you pretty good for what I need you to do. It's not enough anymore. So it's really the old school or the old style of, uh, of recruiting, hiring, and training is the problem. Yeah. Well, uh, Frank, you, you, what you said there was golden, and, and I hope our listeners caught that, that they, they, they take away that you cannot, you know, recruit and, and train and bring on board team members as you did in the past. That's critical. So uh, I know you're going to unpack a lot more of this when you're with us in, at Bull Expo in June. We're going to sneak in one more question for you here today just to give our, our viewers a couple of tips. Share with us what are the top two reasons that you find and you see that uh, most business today aren't delivering on that, that quality guest experience? Well, the first one is just to get a true understanding it, and then it's a commitment. Um, even like I said, some of the, you know, there's, there's two companies are great case studies to watch what not to do. They're imploding, they're great companies. Disney and Southwest are just imploding for whatever reason because of the changes or the leadership that they've had um, in the past uh, or how they uh, have come back or tried to come back or, you know, in the industry post COVID. But uh, you watch what they're doing and you're saying, okay, these two companies were committed and they're struggling. Well, if you don't go and understand what it is to change, to be different, and then commit to it from the top down, it just doesn't, won't happen. And then the other big uh, tip is going to be the people development side of it. And uh, we, like we talked about earlier, the, the investment is not necessarily in new attractions, new games, you know, new scoring systems, new this, new that, even though that all helps and it's great to have, it really is. When you have the best attractions, that helps. But the investment should start being back in our, uh, what do I need to change my operation and how we do it? And then who do I need to do that? And how do I get them to that uh, level of what I want to do to be able to differentiate and make that the experience of folks coming in, paying that additional fee or those rates that you're going to have to charge. But then they're walking out of there saying, wow, that was really different. That was worth it. You know, I'm coming back. Yeah, well, we are an experienced business, and it takes people to deliver that experience. And thank you for re reminding us that again, uh, Frank. Looking forward to having you with us in just a few, uh, just very shortly at Bowl Expo. Uh, I know it's going to be a great time. Thank you for joining us today. You're welcome. Glad to be here. Good. Well, hey, folks, Frank's tips are going to prepare you and your business for that inevitable retraction of the economy when it comes. Imagine being ahead of the curve on this. Now, if you're ready to learn more about understanding and delivering a, a great guest experience, you're not going to want to miss Frank's Bowl Expo session this June in Orlando. It is going to be fantastic. Now, if you're ready to start improving your profitability, you can reach us anytime at education at bpaa.com. So as we wrap up another edition of The Profit Break, remember, when your focus is on growing people, people will grow your business. Now, this episode, as well as all of our previous Profit Break episodes, are available 24-7. You and anyone on your team at bowlinguniversity.net. Plus, we've got new episodes available every month. Mark your calendar, watch your email, join us on Facebook so you can hear about all the latest episodes. Until then, I'm Bart Berger, and remember, do for one what you wish you could do for everyone. We'll see you next time.